Hey everyone, this is Jesse Cohen, and this is Summer School of Chess. Today we're doing more essential tactics training. Are you looking for that one thing you should be doing every day that's going to take you to the next level? Because there is nothing more important than getting really good at tactics. Tactics are the foundation of good chess, and this is what Gary Kasparov has to say. So, if you're with me on this, let's get started. Puzzle 15. I'm going to start off with this position here, which is currently white's move, and I'm looking for the clues. The rook is not protected along with this bishop here. And this king in the back is having some back rank issues. If it wasn't for this bishop guarding it, there would be a back rank checkmate coming with queen to c8. I also need to pay attention to my opponent's checks, captures, and threats. And currently, my opponent has no safe checks, captures, and threats at this moment. So, I'm going to move my queen to c7 just to simply attack the bishop and the rook at the same time. And at this point, there are no checks or any move that protects both. Moving the queen to d6 will fail. Looking at this, there is no move I see that captures it completely or checks. I try to be thorough to make sure my opponent doesn't counterstrike. A very, very big common mistake that beginners and advanced chess players make is being so excited at having all of these tactics suddenly that they just play them without wondering if their opponent has a counter-strike. You always, always train yourself to look one move farther, always. In this situation, moving queen to c7 should work. So, puzzle 16. In this position, there is a lot to do with this last move that triggers my mind gears because I saw that when they played this, there was a discovery attack on the king and I can move my pawn to c4, that is check, and I can attack the king with the queen, but to block it, the white queen has moved down in front of the pawn to block. Now I have to think, how can I get that queen to move? There are no checks in the position I am in, and the only capture is queen takes bishop, and after the queen can be taken by queen or pawn, so this is most likely a threat. But bishop to d3 is probably the right move. If the queen were to take it, we play that c4 discovery check, and it will also hit the queen. If the queen doesn't take it, what can happen as an example? Queen to c3, and play c4, discovery check. And then they play king to h2, and c4 takes b3. And so at this point, they can play queen takes d3, then we can play b3 takes a2. In this situation, this should be good for black. Puzzle 17. Okay, now in this one, queen just took c3. What are the clues in this position? The queen is inadequately defended, and it's only defended just enough by the knight, and the knight is perfectly safe currently. This queen and rook are on the same diagonal line that is also crossed with the diagonal line from this bishop, and I won't play this now because that will lead to queen taking queen. Right now I have to deal with a double threat, so I'm thinking queen takes queen, knight takes, and bishop takes to d4. What this does is that I'm taking and taking that knight is undefended and on the same lineup as the rook on a1. To oh, What you always need to remember is checks, captures, and threats, but mostly checks. You should always stick to the most forceful moves first. The most forceful move gives your opponent the least number of reasonable responses, so they are more easy to calculate. As masters in training, you need to be thorough, and you've got to look at the different variations. You can't be excited when you see one thing that works out for us. We assume that our opponent sees right through that and try to work harder and see some way to fight better. There are three clues that you need to look at as well. Piece safety. When a piece is not defended, has an equal number of attackers and defenders, or is trapped, you should always be aware of that. King safety. If you know that your king has very little protective shielding from pawns, if you notice that a bunch of pieces aiming at the king and there are very few defenders, there's many things that show us that a king is not safe. <sighs> and most of it comes from experience playing chess. Yay, breathing. The final thing is lineups. And when you see clues lining up, like in this case, after queen takes queen, and the knight takes us back, and the knight on c3 is going to be undefended or a loose piece, that is a clue. The knight will then be on the same dark square as the loose rook on a1. This is another clue. This is in the end of the story. 
If a queen takes queen and knight takes back, bishop to d4. They can be defended by the rook to c1, and now the rook is on the same lineup again, and it's still not protected. And really quick, I just want to say for the record, everybody, every time I do this, I highly recommend do not learn from online tactics trainers. This is what most people do to get these things without really understanding why we got them, and this makes things a lot more complex. But, back to the position. Queen takes queen, knight takes back, bishop to d4, pinning the rook, rook to c1. Rook c8 hitting it again and re-pinning it. Then knight to e2, which covers everything. Rook takes rook, knight takes, rook to c8 to threaten the knight. If I get this wrong, I am so sorry. Who rates these problems? Who? People do, I think. It might be an algorithm. So, rook to c1, rook to c8, knight e2, rook takes rook, knight takes back, rook to c8 again, and then knight e2 and rook c2. This will make it so there is no way to guard the knight. If the knight does anything, then the rook goes to c1 next with a back rank checkmate. And this is not pretty for what. All right, everybody, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell all your friends, and, you know, order me some takeout. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.